on you each and every moment of every day. Father, you have great plans for our lives. You have plans not of despair, but plans that give us hope and a future. So we trust in you, and we thank you for your word. And Lord, at this time, uh, we come to um, the message, and we pray that you're blessed upon us at this time. Jesus, we pray. Amen. I still cannot hear anything, so I will have to listen to some online. Someone take Timothy back, please. We were able to, um, I was able to attend some part of Ignite last, uh, this past Ignite. And during Ignite, there was an opportunity where the uh, young people were able to share their experiences and their pains and sufferings as well as uh, whatever it is. Some of them went up to share about uh, depression, uh, how, de how depressed they were, and some of them even considered suicide. This is the state of young people nowadays, not just young people outside of the church, but it also is, a, it is a, something that young people nowadays are experiencing, even in the church. And so maybe you are going through some type of depression, but that is nothing that is new because many people are in the same boat as you are. They are in under the dark clouds of depression. And if that is so, then um, Psalm 42 has an answer for you. Psalm 42 is like a medicine for depression. And so, the, which this morning we will study out of darkness into the dawn, out of the deep darkness of the night, when then we step into the dawn of a new day. And so let us look at the Word of God in Psalm 42. As a deer pants for flowing streams, so pants my soul for you, O Lord. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? These things I remember, as I pour out my soul, how I would go with the throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with grass shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him, my salvation. And my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and all your waves have gone over me. By the day, the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I m go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a deadly wound in my bones, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him, my salvation and my God. Heavenly Father, please shine your word in our, in our hearts. So help us, Lord, to know that we have hope in the Lord Jesus Christ so that we will bold to face any difficulties in our lives and that we will not be depressed, but we will rejoice in you. For Jesus, you are our joy and our life. Lord, speak to our hearts this morning. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Amen. 
we see that there is a seriousness of depression. In Psalm 42, it speaks of depression. And what do we do when we are depressed? The parents of the young people say, Pastor, that would not ha never happen to my children. That would never happen to my child. For my child is a child of God. It's a Christian. And then young people will say, we know many young people in, in Christ and they're depressed. But sometimes we are also depressed, but we cannot speak it out because when we say it, adults, older people don't understand and they even yell at us or, or um, judge us. But you know what? When we study the history of the church, there are saints, there are people of God that we see have gone through the darkness of, of depression of the night. We have spent millions, millions of dollars for depression to cure, to help with depression. Eight billion people yearly go through depression and young people they stop going to to school and adults stop going to um, work but you know what the adults um, a friend will come to you and say be happy well if you're depressed how can you be happy if you if your friend comes if you go to your friend who's depressed and you cheer them on and say hey be happy then when we do that, it doesn't help them and it causes them to be more upset. So how is it that we can... What is depression? Depression is a sadness, a grief or sadness that just stays forever and you see nothing is good. That is a, a state of hopelessness. You say, I don't care and nobody cares for me. Nobody understands me and nobody accepts me. And so you are filled with sadness and fear and, and anxiety. So look at yourself right now, examine yourself. Are you in a state of depression? You feel like you don't want to do anything. You want to just give up everything. And maybe when you are by yourself, you just know to cry. And sometimes you just have a deep sigh. And sometimes you even in the middle of the night, you just wake up and you have no reason, but you just wake up and you can't go back to sleep and you feel so tired, so weak. And then you wake up after a night's sleep and then you just feel so still tired and you feel like you're so in pain. You There's no specific pain in your body. It seems like your whole body is in pain and you feel so, so powerless and you feel like there's no nothing you can do you can you cannot decide anything and you cannot decide you cannot depend on your own wisdom and your decision or the decisions of others and you feel like you're easy to be upset and irritable and you just wish that this world would just stop and let you get off this world but we see in psalm verse chapter 42 verse 5 David asked, my soul, my soul, why am I so, why are you so in tur turmoil in me? So he's talking about the seriousness of depression. The magazine USA uh, in 2022 of September had a uh, Health Day News article. It says that according to a new um, survey, nearly 10% of Americans suffer from depression with the mood disorder increasing fastest among teens and young adults. And then the Fortune magazine of July 7, 2022, 60% of college kids are living with mental health disorders. About 56% say they have experienced worsening stress, while 50%, 53% reported heightened anxiety and 45% cited increased depression. Let's listen to the Word of God, guys. And as the Word of God says, in David says, why, why is my soul so in turmoil in me? So we have, we do face 
the severe problem of depression. But we need to understand it. We don't understand who, we don't know exactly who the author of Psalm 42 is. Most likely it is King David who wrote Psalm 42. But it could be uh, descendants of uh, Cory or Korab or uh, someone else. But no matter who the author of Psalm 42 is, that person was facing a lot of difficulties. And the poet in Psalm 42 relates to his situation where his enemies did not fear God. And so he was uh, in so much turmoil that he could not go to the temple to worship the Lord. If the author of this psalm is King David, he had many reasons to be depressed. He had a son named Absalom who was against him. Uh, the son Absalom was his son that he really loved. And in the end, this son was killed. And now David was um uh, put down from being a king. He was brought down from being a king. He was like um, a, a, a portrait or chicken that's gone in the in the mountain and being hunted by others. And he had a serious sin. He had a son who was killed, uh, who was taken from him early, a daughter who was raped, a son who uh, murdered and whatever, and now a son who is killed. So, on the outside, King David had many reasons to be depressed. And when we read this psalm, and we study this psalm, we would discover that the author of this uh, psalm seemed like there was a, he was probably in a clinical case of severe depression. He was probably has a serious case of clinical depression. And so, it seems like there were some symptoms that we can see. The first symptom is that there was a spiritual dryness. The one who is depressed seemed very far from God. We see, can say that David, the author of this day, uh, psalm, he said, As a deer pants for flowing stream, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? This is someone who says, Oh Lord, I I thirst for you, God, but I cannot find you. I'm like a deer that is hunted, hunted by a pack of wolves, wild wolves. Lord, God, where are you? Have you forgotten me? And so if we see in verse 9, uh, he says that, I would say to God, my rock, why, God, have you forgotten me? But you know what? God does not forget us. And God does not forget us. But the author of Psalm feels like God has forgotten him. And the second thing we see here is that those who have depression, they have mental misery. There is, there, there's dry, spiritual dryness in them, but their, men, their mental is in misery. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Do you hear the cry here? This cry of the author saying, maybe he cries so much. You know, there are times amongst us, we all have come to a point where we cry. We have grief over something. That thing comes to us, but that's not depression. The sadness that we feel, the tears that we shed, yes, we all have. It's like a, it's like a thunderstorm. The thunderstorm comes, and it cleans up everything, right? Uh, when you don't uh, wash your car, a thunderstorm can kind of clean it somewhat. Uh, so... Uh, some people, through the thunderstorm, uh, it clears up the air and they feel better uh, because of the allergy. So with a, with a storm or a rain, it comes a freshness, right? It refreshes the, the land. So the same way, when we are able to shed tears before God, it brings, it's good for us, it refreshes us, it renews us. But if that thunderstorm continues, continues day after day, and uh, the Vietnamese have to say that, oh, it's a, a storm that just stinks the ground. And that means that, like in Washington state, it rains continually. And uh, the, the sky in Washington is often very gloomy because of continuous rain. And many people, when they have that continuous rain in their life, they become depressed. 
And so, a person who is in that state, when they are just crying and crying and in so such long sadness, day after day, that becomes a depression. And this is a point where the author of Psalms say that this becomes my food, my food day by day. It become it brings about a shame, a feelings of shame. Why am I this way? In Psalm 42.3, My tears have been my food day and night while they say to me all the day long, Where is your God? There are people who are depressed. They just swallow their tears in place of food day and night. And the author of Psalm, it seems like, it seems like he is so hopeless. He seems like he, he sees himself as a shame for others. A Christian should be joyful. A Christian should be full of life. Why is it that I'm so always filled with tears and sadness? And I, I'm such a shame. How, I'm not a good Christian. I'm not a good example of a Christian for God and for others. And so he feels like he, he has sinned against God because of his sh shame. And then there is uh, spiritual dryness, uh, mental misery, um, shame. And now, reminiscence of the past, the past that you no longer have. These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I would go with a throng and lead them in procession to the house of God with glad shouts and songs of praise, a multitude-keeping festival. He looked back in his past when he had such joy, when he had peace, when he was so satisfied, he had friends, he had a great marriage, he had a great family, he had great fellowship with God and with his brothers and sisters. And to worship God, those were the good old days. Those were true things that happened to him, that was his experience. But now it is only a memory that haunts him. And he say, I no longer will have that. I no longer will have a peace. I will no longer have a happy family. All that is lost. And now I just reminisce, reminisce about the past, and I am so in deep sadness. And so that only causes the present sadness to become worse because it is only emphasized by the beautiful past. And then there's another thing about depression, is that those who are depressed, they have thoughts about death. In verse 6b to 7, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan and of Hermon, from Mount Hamizar. Deep calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls. All your breakers and all your waves have gone over me. So, it's the waterfalls of God has gone over me. What does he mean when he says about the waterfalls, the deep? He's talking about deep, calls to deep at the roar of your waterfalls that falls over me. He thought about death, you know, to the point where we are so hopeless and we're so tired of life. And you think that death is the, the welcoming solution. So that's why we see many people commit suicide nowadays. There is this young lady who, who committed suicide at 16 years old, and she left a letter to her parents. She said, this dear world, I don't want to cut my hair. I don't want to care for children. I don't want to see Tina on Monday at school. I don't want to uh, complete any of my um, studies, English class or biology class. I don't want to eat. I don't want to sleep. I don't want to breathe. I don't want to move, act. I don't want to do anything. I don't want to feel like living anymore. Mother and mom and dad, it is not your fault. I just feel like I have no freedom. I feel like I'm sick. I'm sad and lonely. That is depression. And this is what the author of Dave, uh, of Psalm said. He said, "Lord, I feel like the water, the the land, of the the deep, the waters of Jordan and Hermon, they are calling me and, co and cover me. And so, why is my soul in so 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 much turmoil? And now, let us look at the spiritual solution for depression. The Word of God through this Psalm gives us a solution for depression." 
Do we have to live with depression? Do we have we lost all hope? Have we fallen down to the point where we cannot stand up anymore? No. In Christ, we have hope. The Word of God lets us see what must we do when we are depressed. Maybe you are not too depressed to the point of clinical depression. Or maybe you are really deep in depression. Or maybe you are just have a little bit of depression. Maybe you face a day where you have so much headache and problems. But the solution for depression in this Psalm 42 can be applied to you no matter what stage of depression you're in. The Word of God is the solution for you. First of all, the Word of God tells us that we are to look inward with the resolute look, with a firm look. The verse four, 5 says, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil with me, within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him, my salvation and my God. What did the author of Psalm say? He said to, he looked with inside himself. Inwardly, he looked. He talked to himself. He said, oh, my soul. That is himself. The soul is his mind, his, his emotions, his will, everything within him. Oh, my soul. Do you know that there's a soul within you that likes to talk to you? The soul, the old self of you, the old self, your old soul continually talks to you. And that is the place where you it brings you to negativity. It's, it's the things that we receive from Adam. And that soul, that fleshy soul, tells us that you deserve these things. You cannot be any better. And you best is you feel sorry for yourself. And you know what? The best thing is just commit suicide. Take your life. That's the old soul. The old soul talking to you. The old soul that's in sin talking to you. So what must you do? You need to answer to your own soul. You need to give a reply to your own soul. And this is what David did. He said, Oh, my soul, why are you in turmoil within me? So he had a look, a firm look, a resolute look. He said, Oh, my soul, why are you in turmoil within me? So he replied to his own soul. Have you ever talked to your own soul? The author of David of um, Psalm used some um, spiritual resolutions, spiritual solutions. They say, why? Why Why am I in that turmoil? You are the best one to answer that question. Nobody knows you better than yourself. And the Word of God says, for who knows a person's thoughts except the spirit of that person which is in him? So you need to face yourself. Look inwardly to yourself and ask your question, why am I why am I depressed? Why am I in turmoil? Why am I depressed? There are many reasons why you're depressed. The many reasons that causes you to be sad and, and get, want to give up. It could be that you are depressed because of a, a loved one that has passed. Or maybe something that brought you that depression. You could be, de uh, you could be hopeless because you're heartbroken. Some uh, young man or young woman has caused you to be heartbroken. Or maybe uh, the older people, uh, m maybe that is your uh, ch children. And maybe children, maybe your parents or your, uh, it could be your husband or your wife or your loved one has hurt you. Maybe you have a broken relationship or maybe you have lost something that is so valuable to you. Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's your work. Maybe it is your name and fame that people have stepped upon. Or maybe whatever it is that you have lost and you don't know how to get that that you've lost back. Maybe you see that this life is so, so unfair. Why is it that uh, you play basketball and Noah has a lot of likes, a, mi a million likes, and Martin only has 500 likes, and you get upset. The state where Instagram causes you to be liked or not be liked, 
And then when you are not liked and respected, and then you compare it to others, that you're not in, at the same level as others, and you're not loved or liked by your friends, and you feel sad and, and upset at this life and depressed. Many people, when they go to Instagram, they, they exalt themselves. It's like an altar to worship themselves. You say, you have one, but you say 10 things that are good of yourself. Because if you don't praise about yourself, then others will look down on you. So you want to, to be like others. And so you lie a lot on these Instagrams or on these uh, uh, social medias so that others will like you and respect you. And if you're not like that, then you will feel so wanna, hopeless and depressed. Maybe you are um, depressed because of the guilt of sin, the sin that has caused so much um, filth into your life, that brought filth into your life and to your spiritual life. And you, you just look outside and you see there's a dark window that covers your window. And then you ask yourself, you need to ask yourself, your spirit, your soul, why, oh my soul, are, in, uh, are you in turmoil? Maybe you can, you see that you're in a state that is a very serious um, situation, a state. Maybe your health. If you have clinical depression in yourself, the first thing is look at, uh, examine your, your health. Your, uh, and, and let your parents know, let your doctor know. And some people say, uh, this young lady say to her parent, her mom say, mom, I'm so depressed. And then the mom say, why are you depressed? You have to rejoice in the Lord always. And so no one understood her. And she tried to commit suicide and she could not. God did not let her take her life. And then finally she went to a hospital to check her in. This is a testimony that we heard. And so in the mental hospital, she could not be visited by her parents or anything. But praise the Lord that when she went to this mental institute, she brought a Bible with her. And when she read the Bible, she met the Lord through reading the Word of God. And she was transformed and touched by the Lord. And she had the joy of the Lord. And she went home to be with her parents, her, with her family. And now she was not ashamed of sharing this. This was... She would share this at Ignite and to, so that others will know what she went through and can learn from it. So there are times when we, don't, we feel like nobody understands us, nobody around us, even our parents don't understand. So in that state, come, go, go to a doctor so that you will receive some help. Above all, seek the Lord and God through His Word can, and His love can help you to know who you are in Christ and the love that He has for you that your identity is not based on the likes on the Instagram or on Facebook, but that you are a child of God. That's your identity, and that God loves you. Don't, uh, don't neglect the truth, but look into your soul and say to your soul, look inwardly and say, oh my soul, why are you so in turmoil? And then the second is that we look upward with a trusting look. Look upward with a trusting look with a look with a look of faith in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. In verse 7, the deep calls upon the deep. By day the Lord commands, oh, sorry. But in, in contrast, in 8 for to 9, by day the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? So look up to the Lord with a look of faith and trust. Though others understand you or not, though you may uh, look into the situation or whatever, look upon the Lord, for He will never cause you to be hopeless. You have a true friend, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. What a friend we have in Jesus, one who cares for me in my life. If nobody understands you, God understands you. He is your rock. He is the rock of your salvation. And when you have um, uh, a look where you look inside and 
speak to your soul and then now you look upon the Lord look upward to the Lord because there is no other way that can help us to resolve depression if we do not look upward with a trust and look to the Lord if that statement is too simple for you because it's your heart is hardened just pay attention to what God has said in verse 8 and 9 here by day the Lord commands his steadfast love and at night his song is with me a prayer to the God of my life I would say to the Lord my, that he is my rock I would say to the Lord my God that he is my rock he is your life and he is the rock of ages the rock of your salvation and you know that the rock is very firm right but the steadfast love is very gentle and sweet so we see that this is a rock a kind gentle rock and that is our God have you heard of a gentle rock that is our Lord he is our gentle rock he is a firm rock but very gentle and loving he is a gentle with our gentle arms care for us but he is also the almighty arms that will protect us so look upward with a with faith knowing that God cares for you don't think that God doesn't care for you the Word of God in Psalm I'm sorry in Matthew 10 30 says but even the hairs of your heads are all numbered God knows everything he knows your state he is your God and if no one understands you and if there is no one that is your friend and if you cannot find a solution God will not leave you hopeless if you when you look inwardly then also look upwardly to the Lord God your hope is in the Lord and so we need to look to God with faith if you look upon God by faith only he is your only hope if you look anywhere else for your hope you will lose faith but God's way is not our ways it's very simple very simple by faith come to God through the Lord Jesus Christ alone and you will find salvation you will be saved from the state of your depression you will find the joy in the Lord King David were amongst the people who were depressed but he and he called out oh God why have you forgotten me why must I uh, go in mourning because of the oppression of the enemy but he found that God is his joy and there was someone who said that life is not a problem that needs to be resolved but life is a secret to living it is not a problem to be say solved but it is a mystery to live that is life. that is life so this pastor remind us that we do not live based on the explanation or, or of things but we live by a, by promises so we say god why is it that if there if you exist why do you let me be depressed why am i feeling this way no god does not make you depressed or hopeless in reality there are things that you cannot understand but we need to look upon the Lord with a, a look of trust and faith in Him because He is faithful. Hold on to His promises. And thirdly, is that we need to look onward. We need to look onward with, an, with a hopeful look. The verse 11 says, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you in turmoil with me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him, my salvation and my God. The author of Psalm 42 is looking forward to the future. He knew that he was going to get out of depression. He had hope in his God. And he said that no matter how dark the situation may be, no matter how severe and how, uh, how dark this class may be, I will have my hope in the Lord. Hope against hope just like Abraham 
when he was promised by God that he would have descendants as many as the stars in the skies and the sand on the on the be on the ocean shore. But how many years have passed? Many years have passed. Hope against hope. Yet he placed his trust in the Lord, and God gave him in his old age of about a hundred years. He had a child, and not only one son, but all the people on this earth who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ are descendants of Abraham. So we look onward, we look forward with a hopeful look. And so, my friends, there's only two places that don't have hope. That is heaven, because in heaven. We are ready to receive what we hope for, right? So there is no hope in heaven, and there's another place that does not have hope, and that is in hell, because there there is no more hope. So now, right now, we just need to have God with us, and we have hope. If you are if you are giving up, and if you are depressed, and you hear the message today, place your hope in the Lord. For and say that Lord God, you are my rock. You are the gentle, kind rock that protects me. I will praise you, God. I will lift my voice up to sing to you, the one who saves me, the one who rescued me. You are my God, and He will change all your pains into hallelujahs. And in His grace, in His time, all the darkness will be become dawn. All the gold. All the, all the cavalry would be uh, rejoicing. Uh, we so do do not lose hope. If there is anything at all, we only hope in the Lord and hope in Him alone. So we come to verse eleven. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise Him, my salvation and my God. Augustine, people call him uh, Saint Saint Augustine, and he say this. He said, "Suppose God were to come to you, and God were to offer you a contract, a deal, and God were to say to you, 'You can have whatever you want. You will live everlastingly. You will have all power.'" Every longing will be satisfied. Nothing will be a sin to you. Nothing will be forbidden to you. You can have everything you want, as much as you want: joy, peace, long life, success, everlasting life. You can have anything you want, with this one exception: you will never see my face. Would you take that deal? If God come to you and say you can have all that you want, with one exception, you will never see my face. Will you take that deal from God? If you say no, then you have true, sincere love for God, and God is number one in your life. But when you hear the, but if a chill went over your soul when you heard that phrase, you will never see my face. Thank God. Because you're saying God means more to me than all this world and all the universes put together. My friends, you see, God has not accomplished, completed His work for your life, for you and for me, to until we come to the most important. Point in our life, that God is number one in our life, and that He is everything for our life. And at that time, He will be our joy. And at that time, we will no longer be sad, depressed, before as we face any situation in our lives. Though you may lose your work, you lose your lot, you lose your friends, you lose your family, you lose whatever, you lose everything. Yet you will not lose God. Because we have God. God is our joy. He is the most important joy in us. Only in God, no matter the deepest night, the deepest darkness, the most hopeless night. Only God, only God is the only, our only desire, our only, our own desire, only desire. 
then there's I will praise him because he is my God. He is my rock of my salvation. So look inwardly for a firm look. Look upwardly with a trusting look. Look onwardly with a hopeful look. And if you are depressed, then in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I call upon you. Don't let Satan quench the fire of hope that is in you. God has not completed His work in your life. I would like to share with you about a lady named June Hunt to conclude the message this morning. June Hunt, this is what she shared. When I was a teenager, I felt deeply depressed over the pain of my in my family. My father was not only unfaithful to my mother, but also verbally and emotionally abusive toward everyone in our family. Struggling in the darkness of depression, I looked at life through a black filter. I had difficulty seeing any good in my circumstances and certainly couldn't see anything good in myself. I harbored hatred in my heart, felt helpless in the here and now, and hopeless about the future. The pain was so intense, I even wondered if I was going crazy. Then, one day, I genuinely invited Jesus into my heart and gave Him control of my life. The hurt in my heart didn't go away, but the Lord lifted the excessive burden that was crushing my spirit. Today, I can truly say, Praise be to the Lord, to God our Savior, who daily bears our burdens. Psalm 68, verse 19. If you are walking in the darkness of depression, I hope these truths that made the real difference in my life would be helpful to you. Please listen to these four points. First, you need to see your life from God's perspective. He cares about you and has positive plans for your life. The Lord says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Secondly, you need to know that God has a purpose for everything that touches you. Nothing in your life occurs that has not first been filtered through God's fingers of love. If God permits it, He guarantees He will use it for your good and for your for His glory. Romans 8.28 says it, We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. May the Lord help us, give us a heart that loves the Lord so that we see that all things good to put together is for our good. And thirdly, you need to know that there will be times when your heart will be pressed down, but also times of restoration because God is a healer of broken hearts. He heals us when we give our heart to Him, and He knows how to restore our joy. 2 Corinthians 4, 8-9 says, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. And fourthly, you need to know that no matter how great your de despondency or depression, God can open your eyes to His unique design for your life. Just as storms replenish the dry, parched soil, giving birth to new life, the storms in your in your life can revitalize your relationship with the Lord and give birth to personalized growth beyond what you could ever imagine. Psalm 119.67 says, Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I will obey your word. If you are struggling with depression, my prayer is that you will see this time as an opportunity to allow the light of God's love to comfort you, carry you, and encourage you so that you can walk from the darkness into the dawn. So how? How can we walk out of the darkness into the dawn? How can we walk from the darkness into the dawn, step out of the darkness into the dawn? 
Jesus wants to be the shepherd of your soul. His goodness and kindness comforts us and opens a way of hope that you would never think that you would have. There are four points that I'd like to share with you really quickly here. First of all, God says that whoever is uh, weary and heavy burdened, come to Him and He will give us rest. So first of all, know that you have a purpose. God has a purpose for your life. That is, God wants to give you salvation. God says, for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have eternal life. For God has sent His Son into this world not to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. That is the purpose that God has for your life. And God came so that the sheep, Jesus came so that the sheep will have life and a life abundant. So the second point is that the, your problem is sin. Sin separates us from God. Sin causes you to do your own will rather than walking according to God's will. So whoever knows the right thing to do and fails to do is for him, it is sin. So sin separates us from God eternally. And Isaiah 59, 2, Your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And thirdly, is that the Savior, God provides for us a Savior. There is nothing that can cleanse and do away your sin except for the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross shedding His blood for you. Romans 5 eight. God shows His love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And the solution for us to return to the Lord, the answer, the solution for us to restore ourselves to God is what? It's Jesus Christ. God says, I am the way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the only bridge that we can take to go to God. Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. So what must we do? What is our part? That means we have to submit to the Lord. We need to give ourselves, our life to the Lord. The Word of God in Matthew 16, 24, 26. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Whoever would save his life will lose it. Whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. But what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? So place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is your Savior. Do not rely on your own efforts and your own strength. Rely on Jesus and what he has done for us. It is by grace for you have been saved through faith. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. And when you receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your life, the dawn will come. The dawn will break forth. And Jesus will be your joy in your life. He has the power to save you from the dark, emotions, the dark state that you're in, and restore your relationship with God. Let us come to the Lord in prayer. If you would like to come to the Lord this morning to receive the Lord Jesus as your Savior, please repeat after me. Lord, I want to have a true relationship with you. I know, Lord, that I many times have chosen my own, my own way rather than your way. Forgive me of my sins, Father. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me to pay the penalty for my sin. Come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. Change me from the inside out. Lord, and transform me to be the person you created me to be. I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.